Hi everybody, this is Non Stamp Collector. Welcome to a side project I'd like to run of occasionally putting out different kinds of videos between my usual scripted cartoons and video essays. Staying on topic, of course, but I'm going to make a playlist perhaps of like response videos, commentaries, comments, walkthroughs, sometimes things with a shorter shelf life than what I've always made. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to what I'm calling the sticky side. Yes, the sticky side of non-stamp collector. Now the videos on this playlist will stay up on the channel for a while and then I'll eventually unlist them. So they'll still be around and watchable, but just not front and center. Keeping the channel character the same and focused on the kinds of videos that I'm known for has always been important to me and this way I'll be able to maintain that whilst occasionally doing things a little bit out of character. So that's what this is all about, and I'm kicking it off with this video, an hour-long 10th anniversary special walkthrough of my two-part Noah's Ark video from 2011. I had good fun making this, so I hope you'll enjoy it too. And uh, please let me know what you think. Hi everybody, this is Non Stamp Collector. And uh, 2021 marks the 10-year anniversary of my uh, Noah's Ark video. And uh, it's one of my most popular, so I thought I would mark the occasion by uh, sitting down here and rambling my way through a kind of walkthrough of uh, of the Noah's Ark thing for 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 those who are interested. Um, it was a it was a good one to make. Um, it's one that uh, I'm pretty proud of. You know, it turned out kind of in line with what I had hoped for. Um, it had a good reception. It's coming up on a million views. hasn't hit a million views yet, but um, I've never done anything like this before, uh, so I don't know how it's going to go. Hopefully I'll uh, not ramble too long and I'll be able to edit this before I post it. But uh, let's go, yo. Let's uh, let's do the walkthrough of Noah's Ark. Here we go. Check. Nave Amir Maxipasitorax. Check. Campanotus Vicinus. Check. Formica Lugubris. Which one's that again? The hairy water. All right. So what I tried to get here was just the scale, right? The, the image, the image here. So just a tiny little office. I wanted it to be as small as as feasibly possible, um, just to this puniness, you know. Uh, there's a sign over there in the left. It's hard to see. It says no animals. Um, again, just sort of highlighting the hopelessness of his of his of his plight you know he's got to put a sign up for animals which can't read it but obviously it's there because they've been bothering him you know he would be surrounded by animals i've got a little corner there of the um of a yard where they've been held you know just to sort of <laughs> represent again like trying to hold two of every species of animals right all right ant. oh yeah check lastly it's Brunius. is that the bullet ant no it's a brown tree ant you should know this by now and lastly mm. the woodlouse ant merimacina gramen all right um the picture now obviously trying to achieve this sense of busyness right and and the impossibility of his task uh, i really do like this picture this the head is perfectly round um and the hunch thing that was deliberate is just just this overwhelm like the weight of the world's on his shoulders um his hands i tried hands are really hard to draw let alone on microsoft paint and this one no hang on no i wouldn't have drawn this on microsoft paint i would i had my mac by this stage back in 2011 but um the hands I was trying to achieve like a, a sense of like all scratched up and beat up and and uh, you know injured by imagine how many splinters the poor guy would have would have copped right I do have to confess that that big area behind him that's sort of bare that was because I just ran out of ideas and time or something but I, I whenever I see this I, I I know that I had intended to fill that space but just never got around to it Nicola check right well how many species of ant is that then 12348 Okay, so we start off with 12,348 species of ant in that list. You know, the, the idea there was to, to uh, suggest that that list had been read out for the entire 12,000 species. Like, that's what they spent all day doing. All right, while we're here also, okay, this, this, uh, this scene, um, the, what are the post-it notes um, and the, the blackboard with their, with their names, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. I don't know how many people sort of know the, the son's names. Um, but anyway, that's all their tasks of what they've got to do, and just overwhelmed, obviously, and all his papers are falling off his desk. Um, the hammer there, again, I have to confess that this was a, a kind of missed opportunity. I wish I'd put more. Um, 
more stuff to do with sort of carpentry. All I could come up with was a hammer and an, and an umbrella, which is a bit lame, but kind of makes the point. And perhaps if I'd put more, it would be a distraction. But um, um, the blue, the blueprint over there at the back, that was um, actually ripped off from the internet. I didn't make that. Perhaps I, I think what I did was I, I found like a blueprint and I just made it blue. Um, and copied there, so I stole that. That 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 is uh, that is not something that I drew. Um, the crocodile calendar, obviously, that was uh, well. That's a that's you know a side gag. Um, very well received, but I mean, people watching it now probably won't get that. Um, you'd need to look up crocodile. In fact, who was the guy who came up with that? It was Kirk Cameron, right? Kirk Cameron, uh, mates with uh, Ray Comfort. They did a debate. Oh, geez, this is early days for me, like 2008 or nine, And he pulls out these images of, like, why didn't evolution produce a mixture of a, of a, a duck and a crocodile? Like, and that, that was serious. Uh, astonishing, astonishing. So that, that's a bit of a, uh, an homage to, uh, to Kirk Cameron. Okay, great. Dad, do we have to take all those different ants? Of course we do! Now hurry up, where are you going to put them? Well, I thought up on level three with the squirrels, frill neck lizards, weasels, dung beetles, panthers, hedgehogs, caterpillars, hamsters, beavers, sawflies, Beavers? Skunks. Hang on, are we... <laughs> right. So that's one of the first, that's the first sort of listing thing. I made up these lists. I wrote these lists of just, I, and it's hard to write a list like that because you have to come up with, well, what I felt, I had to come up with animals that are just completely distinct from each, from each other and stick them in order one after the other. Um... A lot of reorganizing happened with that, like a lot of sort of rewriting and, and making sure, you know, if I had like a, a camel and then a horse, you know, I would move them apart because they were too sort of uh, not connected, but too, too similar. So I had to put things in completely dissimilar lists. Talking about level three or level two? Three. No, I told you, beavers can't go on level three. They have to go on level two with the elephants, intrones, koalas, fruit flies, sloths, possums, bisons, polar bears, cockroaches, grasshoppers, gerbils, armadillos, dad, 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 pick my... Uh, <laughs> and of course, the other thing with those lists is you've got to make sure you don't repeat. Um, I remember, I mean, this is going back 10, 11 years, uh, but I do remember like checking kind of alphabetically. I had to sort of rearrange the list alphabetically to make sure I hadn't repeated anything. All right, so here comes the next sun. I had to make them visually distinct, so they all got just very plain colors. Um, and again, trying to achieve this sort of sense that this is what happens all day, every day, just people running in and out. Um, that that image of the of the little office building with next to the ark had those these tracks, right? So I hope that would indicate that people just running back and forth all day with poor old Noah here, you know, managing the whole project and just his son's running back and forth with problems. So what, what's this problem? I can't remember. Wife just got stung off a bee. Hold on, Ham. We're in the middle of something here. Now, Sham, why are you putting ants anywhere near the frill neck lizards? They eat ants. So if one of them gets out of its box, what's... Frill neck lizards, that's an Australian animal. You might not know that one, unless you're Australian. Uh, the frill neck lizards. So I, I did sort of drop in a few Aussie, good Australian animals into this. What's going to happen? Well, all right. I'll put the ants off the other end with the moths, lemurs, badgers, ladybugs, pelicans, horses, mallards, chipmunks. Oh, speaking of horses, Dad, I forgot to... <laughs> pelicans... What was it? Pelicans, mallards, and chipmunks. <laughs> Tell you, the male horse that was hosting the large red worm parasites died. What? I thought the female rabbit had the large red worms. No, 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 no. The rabbit is hosting the pinworms and one of the tick. That line there, the rabbit is hosting one of the pinworm. What was it? The rabbit is hosting the pinworms and one of the ticks. I misread that. I emphasized... Go back again. What was it? I emphasized the wrong word. Go back. It's died. What? I thought the female rabbit had the large red worms. No, 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 no. The rabbit is hosting the pinworms and one of the ticks. Pinworms? Yeah, okay. The rabbit is hosting the, the pinworms. The, the emphasis should have been on pinworms. See, what I did, I recorded each character's lines all together. And then I had to kind of drag and drop them into sequence. So... Yeah, the red guy here, I can't remember which one he is, but the, the red one, I, I recorded all his lines at once. So I didn't have that in the kind of uh, in the order of the conversation. So I misread that. And every time I hear it, I go, I, I, I got the emphasis wrong. And ticks. Dad, it won't survive that. Well, what can I do? The parasite species have to have a host to live in. So what should I do well, about whatever, the horse? But where do you want me to put the ants and lizards well, I don't and care. Just go and get them on board, will you? I've still got to organise between nine and 10,000 birds. I... That's that's a sneaky little light. Like the I don't care. Just get them on board. Like that's the answer to everything. So that was a kind of dropping that in as like, well, yeah. What else is there to do, really? 
Anyway. Enclosure before tomorrow, and now I've got no male horse. 10,000 birds? Are you including bats with those birds? Yeah, of course. Jeez, Dad, do we have to take them all? Can't we just Yes! Leave? How else are there going to be 10,000 species of bird after this is all over? Okay. Yeah, right, so that... As I wrote this, you know, I mean, starting to write the script was just a matter of, like, just... It was going to be a barrage of impossibilities, right? And... I kept on coming up with them and I would scribble them down. Literally, this script took more than a year of writing and that's when I was active, right? I was putting out videos as I was writing this and it did take at least a year um, because I just kept on going and going and going and then I'd leave it for a while and work on something else and come back to it. But this was, this was back in the day, like before kids, this is two years before I had kids. So this is when I was, you know, this was my hobby. This is what I did um, in my free time. And so this was an awfully long time for me to write a script uh, back then. Um, but that thing of like, geez, Dad, do we have to take them all? It became like a hook that I was going to structure the whole thing through. Like, because without, I, I realized as I wrote it, like as, as I organized all the facts, without that kind of hook um, occasionally, it would just become, it, it didn't have a flow you know, so that was uh, crafting this script for me was a matter of like, how do I organize all of this incredible chaos, but have something kind of along the lines, like a little stepping stone or a little kind of island of repetition. So I needed to find that little repetitive, uh, you could probably call it a motif. Uh, so that was the motif that I came up with. It was like, geez, Dad, do we have to take them all? Yes, of course we do. And that escalates as it goes through. I mean, he's already pretty frantic here. I wanted him frantic from the start to indicate that this has been going on possibly for years years at this stage um because i mean it's the day before it's the day off right because it's about to rain it rains towards the end of this but um i i wanted to hold on i wanted him to already be frantic but it does actually get up in pitch as it goes along hey okay well i'll just go and start loading in the ants okay hang on hang on just make sure all the males are fertile what well, most male ants are just infertile drones that never mate, and there's no point in taking them, is there? Hey, don't forget that the giant anteater, Myrmosophaga tridactyla, eats up to 30,000 ants and termites per day. Oh, that's a good point. Um, you better bring an extra... 365, 30, 22 million ants for the giant anteaters. <laughs> okay, a couple of things there. Yeah, that little mathematics thing, that comes up again later as well. Um... I should have... I, I've never been happy with how they turned out. That was a little trick. I wanted to have more kind of mumbling that made sense, um, of actual mathematical mumblings, but it didn't, didn't quite happen. Um, the ant thing, that, that, that's an example of like, as I wrote this, you know, I had in my mind there would be something about thousands of ants and then there, there would be something about bees and there would be something about rodents and all that. And, but, you know, so throughout the year, I would just get this little, a little tidbit of information and I would scribble it down i was thinking earlier i think i actually had a notepad like a little notebook and a pencil that i used to keep in my back pocket back in these days this was well certainly before i ever had a smartphone um <laughs> for taking notes probably why it works so well um that's a different story but uh i would write down do you see i would, I would just grab a little bit of inf information there like the infertile ants like you know i've come across that throughout the year that little fact would just drop in and i'll be like oh yes that's such a good thing i've got to incorporate that into the script there were so many things like that i just got lucky you know i got lucky again and again on things that just i would just overhear or see in a video back then you know on youtube everyone was making biology videos everyone was making videos about evolution and all these wonderful animal facts you know uh back in those days that was the kind of creationism days on youtube anyway right um what are you standing around for go <laughs> quick what do you want well, that horse, Dad, should I just add its carcass to the meat that we're bringing on the voyage? We're not taking any meat. We don't have room. Well, what are the carnivores going to eat? I don't know. Just plants and stuff. Uh, what? The carnivorous animals' digestive tracts are too short to digest cellulose and plant matter. What? Yeah, right. Okay, so here's an example of, like, this uh, kind of contradiction I wanted to set up that these guys are, like, you know, they're in the desert. They don't know anything, but they've got all this incredible knowledge at the same time. Like... And that's Noah's problem. You know, any any kind of fact that comes in, like the fact that, you know, the reason that, that carnivores can't eat plants is because the, the, the length of their their digestive tract. Like, I didn't know that. Again, yeah, you know, this sort of came up along the way. Um, longer and longer it goes, the, the, the better you're... Or uh, it's more the point that, that meat can be digested faster, so you don't need quite the length of the, uh, of the tract. 
go look it up yourself if you're interested. But uh, <laughs> so that's just a little fact that like nobody at, at that time sort of knew why, you know, cellulose and all that kind of thing. But I, I like to put in these this this uh, mismatch of knowledge. Well, they'll just have to make they'll do. They'll starve hey, to Dad, death. Dad, the male dromedary camel wait, just stepped Dave, on one. Wait, Dad, I don't fancy floating around in a confined space for a year with pairs of starving, hungry lions, wolverines, leopards, crocodiles, dwarf mongooses, polar bears, hyenas, foxes, alligators, vultures, hawks, monitor lizards, donuts, quolls, grizzly bears, weasels, <laughs> pumas, tigers, and Asiatic black bears that might get a bit peckish along Look, the way. I, I, all right. Uh, that's cheating. I remember that. I mean, that was... I didn't say all that in one take. That was at least two takes. Any, any list like that was was never one take. <laughs> I just don't want to hear it, okay? I don't have time for this. I've got to get back to making the snake muzzles so that no animals what? get poisoned by... Well, for the king cobras, death adders, banded rock rattlesnakes, copperheads, black mambas, gaboon vipers, cottonmouths, burrowing asps, small vipers, stiletto snakes, whip snakes, tiger snakes, taipans, black desert cobras, Jeez, pit vipers... Dad, do we have to take them all? <laughs> Same thing there. There's no way that was one take. What? Of course we do! How else are 600 species of venomous snakes going to exist after this flood if we don't take a pair of each of them? And they all have to wear muzzles or one of them might bite some animal and that would be the extinction of that species, wouldn't it? Uh, the knife edge, right? Oh, this is what you're going to say, right? Jeez, when you put it like that, we don't really have much of a margin of error, do we? Oh, you finally figured that out, did you? <laughs> yeah, the margin of error, right? Um, the snake muzzle thing. I, I think I saw a, a cartoon of that. Something like that. That was not entirely my idea. But um, I like to kind of highlight all the way through. It's like, no one's thought of that, right? No one thinks of that. Okay, so there's a snake. It bites an animal. That animal is extinct. You know, it's just like everything is on a knife edge. We have zero margin of error, Ham. Not a single animal is to die in this voyage. Why do you think I haven't been able to get a decent night's sleep for the past few years? What are you doing here anyway? Weren't you meant to be shearing the sheep to make them a little bit more compact? Yeah, well, I was in the middle of <laughs> shearing the sheep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I haven't watched this for so long that, that yes, I am laughing at my own jokes. Sorry. Of that when my wife got a bee sting, so I came here to tell you. Oh, do you think I give a damn about a bee sting when I'm trying to organise a year in a wooden boat with 4,000 species of termites uh, on board? Yeah, all right. Yeah, the... <laughs> These things never come up in Sunday school, right? Bee stings and termites on a wooden boat. I love it. I mean, there's just... It, it, it's shooting fish in a barrel, but, oh, man, it was such a joy to sort of get these little things and work them into the script and sculpt the script and just, yeah, I, geez, some things I had to rearrange enormous sections of the of the script just to work them in. But, oh, God, it was fun. It was so much fun to write this. Dad, and woodpeckers no, and beavers. Dad, Dad, and Dad, think about it. It means that the bee that stung her is going to die, isn't it? Oh, no! He's got a terrible hand there, right? The right hand. Yeah, I was never happy with that. I don't know why it went so sort of curvy. But back then, I didn't really give a shit. <laughs> oh, what species of bee was it? Well, I don't know. How many are there? Yeah, look, he's, he's sort of stabbing himself in the eye. Hands are horrible to draw. I mean, I draw on the iPad now with an Apple Pencil and everything, and hands are just the worst. I don't know. I'm actually... Super proud of that left hand. That's a beautiful left hand. Let alone on uh, on 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 a paint on a Mac Paint equivalent. Well, let's see. There's Trigonoma minima, Apis mellifera, Osmium ribiflorus, Megachile pluto, Bombus praetorum, Bombus. Dad, dad, just give me a number. It'll save time. Well, about twenty thousand. <laughs> the suggestion being that he will, he was going to list twenty thousand species of bees off the top of his head because that's what he's had to spend the last years doing, memorizing lists of, of animals. And of course, yes, look, as we've in, in the ensuing 10 years, the, the the number one rebuttal comment from believers, of course, is that he didn't have to take every kind of species. Um, and if I would only read the Bible, then I would have noticed that he was taking kinds, not species. And my comeback to that has always been, OK, and if you'd watched the entire two part video, you would have noticed that the final kind of three or four minutes, I think, is exactly about that. And I go to lengths to set up the fact that he did have to take every single species for the reasons to do with DNA, you know, and, and gene transfer and, and G, um, mutations and things and, and and the rates of mutation that occur, which he's going to get to at the end. So I, I purposefully kept on repeating that. And I knew it would probably be pissing people off. And it did, because they never watched the end of the video. They'd say, why didn't why don't you read the Bible? And I wrote back and said, well, why don't you watch the video? Um, but that's a point that I wanted to make again and again and again. Like, 
I, I'm, I am doubling down on that. Yes, he did have to take every single species. 20,000 pairs of bees. Really, Dad? Do we have to take them all? Yes! How else are there going to be 20,000 species of bee after the entire planet has been submerged for a year unless we take a pair of each of them? What the hell is wrong with you people? Now go and find out which bee species we need. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you people to his own kids, right? It's just the, 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 the manic... The manic frustration of this poor man, this poor 600-year-old man. New one, Owen. Tell the other bees not to sting things for the next year. Right, but Dad. Dad, Dad, oh, sorry, Dad, just, Dad just a quick question, Dad. Female fleas drink 15 times their weight in blood every day. Should they be getting that from just one animal, or should we let them roam around getting it from whichever animals they want? I don't friggin' care, just as long as it survives. Right. <sighs> Dad. <laughs> right. Stupid question with a stupid answer, right? But who has thought of that? Who's thought of fleas? Right? How did the fleas survive? What did they eat? Whose blood? 15 times, you know, just the animal world, right? There's such fantastic little fun facts, you know, a, a, a female flea drinks 15 times its body weight in blood every day. Gosh, that's a lot of uh, excreting, isn't it? But uh, you don't hear about that in the Sunday school version, in the kids picture book version, you know? Dad, I've been trying to tell you, the male dromedary camel just stepped on one of the snails. No! <laughs> Which... <laughs> That's visual effects, non-stamp collector style. That lean. I mean, that takes an enormous amount of time to do a little, a little thing like that. I mean, enormous in the grand scheme of things, right? It, 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 it would probably have taken an hour um, to just get that with the great big eyes. And now we're back to this terrible hand that I am never happy with. Nail. Well, I don't know exactly, but I have figured out it was either. What do you a mean you don't know which one? Well, I don't know. It's totally squashed, and they're only half loaded. Half loaded. All right. So this is setting up this half loaded. What do you mean they're only half loaded? Um, that sets up a joke later on about the the cat. No, was it the cats? Something about like every species has to be loaded in at the same time. Every every species of each kind or something. I think he goes and says kind. But that's a setup for a later joke as well. I'm a 600-year-old man responsible for seeing that the Earth is populated with millions of species of animals after God insists on drowning all but a single boatload of the freaking things. Could you at least try to help me out a bit? No wonder I'm going to turn into a hopeless alcoholic when this is all over. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> uh, the foreshadowing. This foreknowledge. Yeah, they, they've got... They've got uh, disproportionate understanding of the animal world and things like, uh, you know, digestive tract length being responsible for cellulose breakdown. And he's in his, <laughs> no wonder I'm going to turn into a hopeless alcoholic. See, that's the other thing you don't know about Noah. He becomes a, di a degenerate, which is a kind of weird thing to put in the story if you're the author of Genesis, but uh, there it is. So let's, you know, make the most of it. Now just keep the camels away from snails from now on. In fact, keep them away from anything else that they might accidentally step on too. In fact, keep every small animal away from any animal that might step on it. Night and day, with zero margin of error. Go! Dad, can we use the area on level one between the chickens and buffalo as a kind of hospice for treating animals who are on the brink of starving to death or dying of disease? Yeah, so here's an example of like a, a new chunk. You know, now we're going to talk about the whole veterinarian thing. Um, it Writing it was a, a matter of kind of marking out where a new a new theme would begin and then trying to interrupt that theme at the same time at the same rate and always keeping the same rate of interruptions and random um random interruptions to 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 you know keep the chaos going um so i wrapped that bit up there it looks like with uh you know sorting out that and that and that and sorting out by the way simply is Noah yelling at his kids to just go and sort out so that no big animals tread on any small animals? Okay, go. Like there's nothing else. What there's nothing else for it, right? So here's that's an example. This this is a setup to this new thing about um, veterinarian care, which again you never hear about, and there's no explanation for it except magic. You know, it, the the way out of all of these, the way out of all of these impossibilities and and conundrums is magic, um, and people have, you know, believers, they, believers have just come back and said, well, what God did was cause all of them to hibernate for one year and, and you know, that kind of excuse. Like, he, he can do that, but he couldn't have just come up with any other way to do it than put poor old Noah here to this level of hell on earth, you know. This? What? Well, you are going to be providing veterinarian care for every single species of animal on the planet for the whole voyage, aren't you? I hadn't actually considered that. Well, every animal's going to have insufficient food and space for a year. It's not 
like impossible that a few of them might get sick and die. Oh, no, 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 no. No animal is allowed to die in this voyage. Well, that's... It's obviously like a fear, right? It's obviously this is this is like in the back of his mind always not a single animal. Exactly what I mean, Dad. Like, Sorry, can I just butt in quickly? Uh, where are we going to put the polar bears? <laughs> Look, wherever there's room. I don't care. We're busy trying to yeah, work out how to... We have to keep to... them away from the penguins, obviously, but that'll mean having two cold areas. Okay, that right there, here's a confession. That's just an enormous fuck-up on my part. Polar bears and penguins. I confess that I had in my mind that polar bears probably eat penguins because they both occupy, you know the cold areas so that's we've got to make sure that doesn't happen without sort of realizing that uh, one's in the northern hemisphere and one's in the southern and they'd never met and no polar bear has ever met a penguin so there's my confession that's like a really amazing oversight on my part now i've let the cat out of the bag anyway but that's what i mean also about this random you know the pace of these random um interjections from from the kids from the boys rather than just one what are you talking about well, shouldn't we at least try to make some sort of cold area so the it's animals It's a frigging from... ark, Ham, made of wood! Not a frigging five-star sightseeing luxury liner for well-to-do arctic animals! What, so are you going to put penguins and fur seals next to desert scorpions, meerkats and camels? Listen, genius! We live in an age when a frigging wheelbarrow is a piece of high-tech equipment, so how do you suggest that we make a cold area? All right, all right, all right, cancel that. Thing. Wheelbarrow, eh? And he just goes, he just disappears. He's got like, how are we going to do cold and hot? Oh, okay, never mind. Um, the wheelbarrow line is a gag from none other than Sam Harris. Sam Harris has this great dry dry deadpan humor and uh, occasionally in a, in a speech or a debate or something he'll come up with something like that and and i heard him i heard him say that um wheelbarrow line you know this is a this is a group of people he's probably talking about you know biblical people generally from that era of human uh, that era of human history and he said you know th these are not scientific scientifically knowledgeable people these are people for whom a wheelbarrow would be high tech and you know that got a gag in in that sort of sam harris way so I pinched it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm, that might help me get the sloths in. Freaking slow bastards. I don't know how they got here from their native Central America. Central what? Anyway, Dad, I just need to... All right. Now, the Central America line has gotten many comments. People like that. That's good. Uh, Central, Central what? He's never heard of America. Now, later on, there's something about Cuba. And that never gets as many comments. Ever. Very Ameri uh, American-centered... Uh, <laughs> selective listening. <laughs> so the uh, central what? Anyway, clear this up as well as being a veterinarian to every single species of. Yeah. See, now he goes back to the veterinary thing. It, the, the whole thing of like, you know, they started on that topic and then they got interrupted with the hot and cold thing, and then they like that creates this tension. As I was writing, I wanted to sort of stretch out that tension. Like that's unresolved. There's this unresolved thing happening here, right? Of the uh, of the veterinarian care, which the other guy came in and interrupted. So it creates this urgency, right? You got to keep that in the mind. Like it's like Noah's desk there, right? It's just covered in stuff. Imagine the number of things you'd have to keep in mind. You know, even on a small scale like this, of like, okay, where were we? We were talking about veterinarian care, right? Animal. You've got to be a doctor to us, because you said we're going to have to each carry a few parasitic infections in order to preserve them too. Yeah, now behave yourself or I'll assign you to carry the crab lice. What? You said I could just have the head lice. Did you organise the parasites already? Why did he get the head lice? What did I get? I'm not carrying the hookworms, am I? I don't fancy spending a year on a boat with diarrhoea. Jake, Jake, look, we've all got to make certain sacrifices to save animals like the hook. <laughs> he goes all quiet. We've all got to make certain sacrifices. You've got to shit yourself for a year. Worms, okay? Oh, it's not fair. Why does he always have to be the favourite son? Friggin' Shem. I think I'll become the world's first anti-Semite after this is all over. All right, then, good. No yeah, all right. So that line, uh, again, just a fun fact that I came across throughout that year sometime is the fact that the uh, the word, yeah, Semite, comes from the name of this son, which is Shem. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, again, I, have, yeah, I like this to sort of twist the time, right? Twist the time around. And, and so there he is predicting that he will become the, the first of, of many uh, anti-Semites in human history. Because he, he's pissed off at his brother because he's got to, he's got to carry the tapeworm or the hookworm or whatever it was. That's the that, there. There's a little uh, alternate history, alternate uh, explanation of history. You know, anti-Semitism grew out of one uh, one of Noah's sons' frustrations of having to uh, be host to the to the hookworm and shit himself in a boat for a year. My dad, frogs. Quick, what about them? 
Well, I was just about to load them all in. All 4,740 pairs at once, I hope. Yeah, of course. And I was... See, again, he's got that knowledge at the tip of his fingers there. He knows exactly how many. Um, I was about to interrupt there I didn't, and just say, yeah, great segue, right? Now, Dad, frogs. That was an example of, like, I couldn't quite sort of connect it apart from just going, right, next, frogs. I was thinking that... You know, maybe we don't need to take them at all, actually, because they like the water, see? And I oh, figured that they would... Are you suggesting... Okay, did you hear that? No, I actually did say, oh, for fuck's sake. But in the editing, I took it out because... Uh, he swears later, but I, I thought it was too early. So I, I, dipped the, I dipped the volume on that. Actually, because they like the water, see? And I oh, figured that they would... Are you suggesting... This, again, is setting up that thing of, like, Dad, do we really need to take them all? That thing I mentioned earlier about um, having the... Uh, um, this motif, right? That because frogs like water, they'll be happy to float around in a 29,000 foot deep ocean for a year? Well, I... Did you say 29,000 feet? Besides, I'm not exactly sure how God plans to make the oceans... I don't know if you heard that. There. Besides, I'm not exactly sure how God plans to make the oceans habitable or something, he says. There's editing in that. There's audio editing. I can't remember what it was. Did you say 29,000 feet? Besides, I'm not exactly sure how God plans to make the ocean... But I think I was swearing. I think the original script had I'm I'm fucked if I know how God intends to, or something like that and I took it out and it just worked it but I can hear I can hear a sort of pop pop thousand feet besides I'm not exactly sure how God plans to make yeah, you can bear if, I don't know if you can hear it I'm looking for it so I can hear it I'm not exactly sure how God intends to yeah. so that was that was sweary but I took it out the ocean's habitable for both freshwater and saltwater life anyway yeah but, uh, really, but do we have to take them all I mean 4,700 <gasps> is a lot of species. how else are there going to be 4,700 species of frogs later if we don't take a pair of each of them do the friggin math man did you really say 29 thousand feet. Dad, Dad, the praying mantis has just mated and the female bit the male's head off. No! No, I was afraid of that happening. Well, why did it do that? Well, that's just what the females do. Oh, I was going to make a helmet for him tomorrow morning too. <laughs> Alright, that, um, the helmet thing, I was, I had in mind that it was going to be something about a pistachio nutshell. I think that was in the script, like that he'd been you know, he 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 had a, a pistachio nutshell that was going to be on his desk, and he couldn't find it, and it got you know lost under his papers or something. Um, all right, and then this fly thing. So this needed to be. Um, uh, I, I okay. The whole reason behind there being a part one and a part two was because back at this era of of, of YouTube, this is twenty eleven. Um, basically, the longer you video, the fewer people watched it. That was just a rule. In fact, the, the video that really got my channel moving was um, the atheist one, where it's like the bluish green background. And it's like, do you believe in Zeus? Do you believe in Vishnu? Do you believe in Wotan? Do you believe in this? It went for a minute and 29 seconds or something. And it was it was a hit. And it, I mean, back in on that scale, you know, I got, I got hundreds of views on the first day, which was probably, you know, but shorter, the better. And this was long after that many many videos after that but anything more than 10 minutes i think just didn't get watched so the idea was that i wanted to have it in two parts and uh and that's what this fly thing is this is a hook that can go between both bits here we go oh shit i just spotted a fly that wasn't one of ours was it all right so then it continues off into part two this sound by the way i'll play the sound a bit this is this layer upon layer upon layer of um of you know freely accessible sound effects of animals it it the, the squawking. I mean, it, I want it to be raucous. Here, have a listen. All right, and then we'll go on. Oh, shit, I just spotted a fly. That wasn't one of ours, was it? Now you'll have to go and check to make sure none of ours have escaped. Don't do that again. Come on, frogs. All right, so a real short gag, right? And that's why I used it to bridge the two pieces. Um, both parts came out exactly at the same time. I didn't wait or put it, you know, a week later or anything like that. They came out at the same time. Dad? Oh, screw the frogs. Where am I going to get another praying mantis? Yeah, Dad, look, what should I do Dad, about that? Dad, what like... do frogs eat? Insects. Well, which ones? I don't freaking know. Just bring enough insects to feed 9,480 frogs for a year. And use your common sense. Little frogs like Brachycephalus didactylus from Brazil and Eulotherodactylus siberia from Cuba are only about 10 millimeters long, so they won't need as much food as a 12-inch goliath frog, will they? Where's Cuba? Jeez, Dad, let's just take yeah. one... There's the Cuba line that never gets a never gets a comment. 
a pair of frogs. That'll be enough. Oh, freaking shut up, Ham! Do you guys think that if we leave species behind to drown, they'll just... Now, there's some visual effects. Jeez, you, did you miss that? Blink and you missed that. But, um, yeah, his eyes went all red. Um, part three is mostly these three guys together. I don't remember if that was intentional, but... Um, it, in fact, it comes to mind that it wasn't, but I just sort of noticed that part three... I think in part... One, they were never all together. Can't remember, it doesn't matter. But uh, that became a sort of characteristic of part two, which was a nice sort of uh, differentiation. Appear magically later? Get out of here, both of you. Haven't you got work to do? Sham, you go and find a way to make sure that the mosquitoes don't spread any infections within the boat for an entire year. Well, has mosquito netting been invented yet? Are you kidding? Mm, okay, but before <laughs> I do, Dad, did you really... Again, there's that, you know, that... Uh, what would be the word... Would it be asynchronicity, like something about being out of order and foreknowledge and all that? Say 29,000 feet. Yeah, now he's hung up on this 29,000 feet deep thing. So this is something that stretched out, right? He says earlier, you know, that this this uh, this boat's got to withstand, um, you know, being that in, in water that deep. Not that it makes much difference to a boat. I did realize that. But I had to work in this thing about Everest being covered. Deep? Yes, at least. It's going to rain so much the water covers the top of the world's highest mountain, which is that high. How long is it going to rain for? 40 days and 40 nights. I don't have time okay, for this. So hold on. Let me work it out then. Um, It's going to come down at the rate of... Yeah, see, that's pretty shit. I, I wanted to have more real mathematics, but I just think I didn't prepare it. And I get into the to, to, to recording it and... um and hadn't done it, so I just sort of... And then ended up cutting most of it out there anyway. It's one of those things that any time I watch this video, I hear it and go, oh, God, I should have, I should have done that better. 350 inches of rain per hour at every point on the planet, nonstop for 40 days. That's a great fun fact, isn't it? 350 inches of rain per hour for uh, five or six weeks. Um, yeah, they hadn't thought of that. You know, no one who told me this story as a as a kid or as a as an older believer never sort of had done the had done the sums on that. That's a hell of a lot of rain. Look, some of the water will come from within the ground too. Okay, but still, Dad, there's less than four hundred eighty million cubic miles of water on this planet anyway, including that which is in vapor form. You're basically saying it's suddenly going to more than triple. Oh, look, I don't know. Maybe that had a footnote. There's the footnote number one. Um, I can't remember what it is now, but it was some website that I. That I uh, that I referenced that you know the the whole thing of how many cubic did I say miles? How many cubic miles of water? Um, sometimes it's imperial, sometimes it's metric in this thing. But uh, makes me wonder if the website is still linked properly from that footnote. I don't know. That mountain's less than twenty nine thousand feet high at the moment, and perhaps it will suddenly grow up afterwards or something. <laughs> the raised eyebrows there. That's a that's a a usual comeback that. You know, this mountain, this uh, this flood caused the mountains to rise. That's something I've heard you know, like young Earth people saying. And the raised eyebrows, I think, is a good retort to that. <laughs> yeah, and poor Noah's with his with his eyebrows up, going, "Don't you believe me?" Oh, there's the footnote. That's probably what that is. Okay. But but first, while I've got you all here, new rule, everybody. From now on, every species of each animal has to be loaded in at the same time. It's what? just two. What? What? Dad, there are only eight of us. How are we going to oversee the loading in of every species of, say, rodent at one time? I mean, think of how long it took Shem just to load in the cat species. It was a bit like herding atheists the way they just went off all in different. Yeah. I think back in the day that reference would have been better understood. That there was something uh, Richard Dawkins used to say it often that um, you know atheists tend to be free thinking people and not um, not easily organised um, and with differing views on all sorts of things. Um, and and trying to organise atheists is a little like herding cats. Um, and this is why atheism. This is the reason. One of the reasons given why perhaps atheism hasn't been the political force that it ought to have been um, given the numbers, you know, back, I don't know what the stats are now, but, uh, you know, back then I can, it's just coming to mind now that back in, you know, 2010 sort of era, people were talking about, well, in the American electorate, for example, something like 15% were, were out atheists, but which was more, uh, numerically speaking, sort of uh, population wise than the Jewish population of America. And so why was, you know, the Jewish community so well represented politically, but the atheists not? It was to do with that. You know, you can't organize atheists. Trying to organize atheists is like trying to herd cats. So that's what that gag meant.
Dad, I had cheetahs, leopards, African golden cats, Eurasian lynxes, ocelots, jaguars, Andean mountain cats going one way, Chinese desert cats, lions, pampas cats, caracals, cougars, jungle cats, and snow leopards going another way, while the marble cats, Asian golden cats, Canadian lynxes, palace cats, servals, bobcats, tigers, rusty spotted cats, and sand cats went yet another way. It was a little bit frustrating and rather time consuming. Dad, do we have to take all those cats? Friggin' yes! How else are there going to be cougars and leopards if we only take bloody tigers? I really am. <laughs> it's so Australian. All right, that's my Australian. You only take bloody tigers. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I've always wondered how that sort of plays in uh, different accent uh, nations of America, obviously. But I, I, I don't know if Americans sort of understand the whole thing of what if we only take bloody tigers? Anyway. Surrounded by utter morons! Especially you, Japeth, with this bloody <laughs> snail crisis of yours! If we don't find that missing snail species and replace the one- Zoe, so, I mean, that, that comes out when I'm in that kind of mood. <laughs> bloody. Bloody is the Australian word. Um, I, I believe, etym etymologically speaking, that thing of you know, bloody this and bloody that comes from um, a Catholic uh, this thing of by our lady. By our, I swear by our lady became etymologically became bloody. Um, but anyway, yes, it does come out. <laughs> there it is. I think it just probably, it may not have even been in the script, but there I am, you know, shouting this into a microphone and it just sort of came out naturally. That the unicorn trod on Yahweh. It was and the I camel, gonna... Dad, not the unicorn. I don't give a shit. Oh, look at those eyes. Now, um, he's got extra hair. You know, this this is up on screen for like one second. I just caught it in time. Um, but I was always disappointed that the eyes look like they're looking way to the right. They don't look like they're staring to the center. It looks like he's staring at the wall. So, again, you know, what can you do? Okay. Oh, nice teeth too, right? <laughs> I don't even have unicorns. They're not real. What do you mean we don't have unicorns? They're mythological. It's it's a fictional animal, Dad. We're not taking oh, any. Fictional animal. Well, you just listen, smarty pants. When someone sits down and writes about unicorns later in Deuteronomy 33, Job 39, Numbers chapter 22 and 24, Isaiah 34 and Psalms 22, 29 and 92, are you going to call him a liar? Go! Uh, there's an error in that. I think it's in the description. One of those books is, uh, one of those references is wrong. I think I got the chapter wrong. Didn't read it very well either. But anyway. And get some freaking unicorns from somewhere! Actually, no. Ham, you go and get some. Right. Two or fourteen, Dad? Ugh, what do you think? Have you ever seen an unclean unicorn? Well, have you ever seen a clean one? Why would we take fourteen? <laughs> We're taking fourteen of all the clean animals. What? For food? That's actually a very good idea. I'm quite no, no, no. To, hear... to slash their throats and burn their carcasses when we're back on dry land. Oh, yeah, of course. Hang on. Does that mean we're taking seven pairs of cows? Yeah. He loves the smell of burning dead cow. What kind of deity doesn't? Well, can we just make sure they're near our one and only window since they each fart 26 gallons of methane gas every day? Mm, Ham, speaking of gut-wrenchingly disgusting smelling things that will make this voyage like a year in an open sewer, I want you to work out how... <laughs> oh, you got to go for the toilet humor. There's a chance. I mean, it's, it's, it's rife, right? Uh, <laughs> Okay, not much more to say about that, actually. I shouldn't have stopped. How to manage and dispose of several million animals' piss and shit for a year, okay? And now while you right, do that... Right, Dad, but I'll... hold on, hold on. I've already given this shit some thought, and I wonder if perhaps this is going to be more than simply a one-man job. Why? How much poo are you expecting there to be? Well, I consulted an expert source who thinks that the figure is going to be somewhere around 12 US tons of animal waste being produced daily. 12 tons a day? I think we're going to need a bigger shovel. That is uh, a reference to Jaws. I think we're going to need a bigger boat. I think I had recently seen Jaws, or you know, sometime during that year of writing the script, I had seen Jaws, and, and I borrowed that because it's a bit of a meme as far as um, you know, a line in script. I think we're going to need a bigger boat. So that's what that is. That's from Jaws. But actually, Ham, where are you getting that figure from? It's certainly a lot of shit, but it kind of <laughs> seems woefully inadequate to me. Uh, answers in Genesis.com. Okay. And that's a monumental fuck up because Answers in Genesis is not .com, it's .org. Um, and I didn't realize that until it was out and gone. Um, we just talk about the Answers in Genesis website, you know, all the time back then. And, and, and uh, because that was, as I said earlier, this era of YouTube, this is what we we're up against was creationism. Um, so... Yeah, huge stuff up there. I wish I had got that right. But uh, it, it, it's it's okay because AnswersInGenesis.com redirects to or redirected to .org. Anyway, I don't know if it's still up. I guess it probably is. AnswersInGenesis.com. Yeah. Give me that. Here. 
Hmm. Mm. Hold on. It says here that they're basing that estimate upon us taking only about 16,000 pairs of animals. Are these people friggin' idiots? All right. I'm so proud of that sound effect. I love that. I, I found the, the wee in the smashing glass. Um, I had an iPad. That's At that time, let me think, 2011, the iPad... Oh, it, no, I would have been around for... Geez, not long. I mean, I did have the original iPad... Um, at the time. And when I drew that, I remember I had to draw um, m several versions in order to finally get the size right to sort of drag it onto this on, on the paint program. Um, I, it took a couple of iterations. Jeez, perhaps, I probably foreshadowed the iPad mini and the uh, iPad Pro when I was doing that. But anyway, it would have been the Yarpad. Yeah, very happy with that sound effect. That just worked out so well. <laughs> Let's have it again here basing that estimate upon us taking only about 16,000 pairs of animals. Are these people friggin' idiots? How do they expect there to be millions and millions of variant species on the planet anytime soon after this is all over? Dad, this is what we've been trying to tell you. It's microevolution. Whoa, 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 hold on. That sounds to me like some kind of theory or something. No, no. Again, this was one of the cop-outs back then. I don't know how many people watching this now sort of were familiar with the creationism time, you know, what we're up against back then, what everyone was talking about. Um, they were okay with microevolution, like evolution within within species or something, like talking about kind of like dog species or something like that, but they were not into accepting the idea of macroevolution. Um I won't bother going into that, but uh, that's what we were talking about back then. So this was a, a reference to, if, you know, if any believers were still watching at this stage and we're going, oh, well, it's, you know, I, I won't accept the, the, the macro, but I will accept the micro, then this is designed to blow that out of the water. No, 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 it's only a theory if it involves speciation. Otherwise, it's a fact. Yeah, Dad, basically, it's animals undergoing minor mutations across generations that eventually compound in such a way as to give rise to a huge variety of forms within kinds. Well, within what kind of time frame? Because I within kinds, right? That's the whole thing. And then Noah says, well, within what kind of time frame? Now, I think that was meant to be a pun, with, within kinds. And then Noah was meant to say, well, within what kind of time frame? But I think I misread it. I don't remember God saying he was happy to wait around for tens of millions of years for animal millions species Millions of years? Millions? Well, how long? Well, I'd say, I don't know, maybe five generations? Mm, maybe ten. Fifteen at the most. Are you friggin' kidding me? You're saying we take one pair of one type of bear, and within a few generations we'd have grizzly, polar, brown, giant, Tibetan blue, spectacled, sun, Asiatic, black, and panda? Well, they're all bears, Dad. It wouldn't take that long, would it? Yeah, it wouldn't take that long. What the fuck would you know? Think about it! <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, not so happy with those eyes, but I mean, it was just a sight gag, but... I'm, I am happy with my delivery of what the fuck would you know about it. Let's go back and listen to that again. Eh? But, yeah, it wouldn't take that long. What the fuck would you know? Think about it. <laughs> okay. Um, I recorded this literally in a closet. Um, and by the end here, you'll hear in this next section as, as Noah does his big rant about um, the science, my voice is failing because I'd done the three the three sons first because I knew that would that were you know the the lowest volume and I saved Noah to last so that I could just go all you know go for it um, and lose my voice in the process which I kind of did and you'll hear that in the next one if you listen carefully but I was literally in a closet and shouting and we had just moved. We had just moved into a new apartment building and we'd only been there for two or three weeks at this stage. And so I tried to be as quiet as possible and lock myself into this closet. But then my wife went, went out and she, you know, she's coming back and I'm recording it. She says, we can, I can hear you really clearly from outside. So, you know, here I am in Japan and there's, there's, there's some foreigner moves into the apartment upstairs. And then <laughs> two weeks later, there's a screaming into a microphone. What the fuck would you know? Anyway. Under ordinary circumstances, mutations due to duplication errors during meiosis or DNA replication is going to be extremely slow, isn't it? In the order of one error per 10 to 100 million bases, unless it was sped up by some sort of radiation or viruses or mutagenic chemicals, or the dysfunction of some enzyme that ordinarily helps catalyze the polymerization of deoxyribonucleotides into a DNA strand or something. That took take after take after take, as I can imagine you can appreciate. I can't talk that clearly. <laughs> I can't 
No. <laughs> and it's not as if God's going to come along and inflict mutagenic chemicals upon these animals, nor expose the planet to excessive ultraviolet radiation in the hope that he can fast-track the transition from one pair of some rodent all the way to beavers, rabbits, ferrets, long-eared spiny-tailed squirrels, white-faced tree rats, red-bellied brucies, Wyoming pocket gophers, silver mountain voles, Peruvian vesper mice, woodchuck, Siberian chipmunks, and orange-spined hairy dwarf porcupines within a few hundred years. Orange-spined hairy dwarf porcupines. Is that the greatest animal name ever or what? <sighs> Anyway. And then suddenly step in and slow the process back to a normal rate of change once he's got all the animals he wants, especially if there isn't adequate time for natural selective pressures to help sculpt each form of animal to adapt them for survival in certain ecosystems and geographical environments. And anyway, think of the population bottleneck, guys. Even taking two of every single animal means that every species on the planet is going to be left with practically no genetic variability to allow for adaptability and disease immunity. The offspring are going to be all inbred and the infant mortality rate will be so bad that we'll be lucky to even get to the fifth generation. So if you're suggesting reducing the animal population to pairs of only 12,000 kinds, whatever that is, how the hell is there going to be any decent mutation for natural selection to act upon at all even if it had time to? It simply will not work! There's no way in the world that the planet will be promptly populated with the range and breadth of variant species that God intends with this planet after this flood unless we take a breeding pair of every single species. And there is just no other way. <sighs> Dad, I'm going to tell you straight up. I wanted a longer pause there. And I can actually hear that if I've got earphones on. There's a little pop and a little pop in that space where I've cup like pasted in a bit of silence from somewhere else or taken some out or something um that was meant to be like the you know the the the, the climax of the whole of the whole movie like yeah there's no other way and then you know where do you go from there like th that that whole spiel was just designed to 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 back them into an inescapable corner um and then where do they go from there and 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 i give them the script you know they've got it They've got no choice but to do what they're about to say right now, which is... I don't like the facts that you just presented, so I'm going to completely ignore them and go on believing that taking just one breeding pair of each kind will be enough. Yeah, me too. Yeah, Dad, it's my choice what I believe, and that science of yours is getting in the way. Yeah, all right. I mean, where else do you go? So hopefully that was a corner that they, they found themselves in. I whack them over the head with it. <laughs> and... Uh, and there's that. So where do you go then? Well, you're stuck with Noah. What's Noah going to do? Well, he's got a he's he's got no choice but to say, okay, well, I'll just suspend everything I know and go along with that as well. Okay, then I'm with you guys. What? I don't have a choice. I've just got to go along with what you're saying. But but, Dad, all those facts you just explained. So you guys understood what I said, but you ignored it, right? Mm, completely. Totally. Well, I've got to do. They're smiling. I wanted them to laugh more. I, that, that never came across as like how happy they are to completely ignore what they know. To completely ignore it. I wanted it to be happier. But anyway, I, I don't know if that comes across. Maybe I'm overthinking it. We're the same. Both of our plans are batshit crazy. But if I can't convince myself to believe this story somehow, then I might start to question other aspects of my belief in Yahweh. And I don't want to start on the slippery slope towards a meaningless, worthless, atheistic life of only believing in things that make sense. Dad, did you ever consider that what we're doing here is total bullshit historically, but actually a meaningful metaphor for something? Yeah, right. So here I am trying to get just that last, the last, like, thread that you could possibly be holding on to. Okay, well, you know, the DNA science, all the impossibilities, the practicalities. All right, it can't be real. And okay, well, you know, it's in the Bible, so it must have some value. So it must be a metaphor, right? And no, I'm going to take that away from you as well. <laughs> but what could it possibly be a metaphor of? Hmm, perhaps for demonstrating how Yahweh is a mass-murdering, psychopathic, death-obsessed crybaby deity who kills everything he possibly can when he doesn't get his own way. <laughs> I put the biblical reference to, <laughs> to validate that view. <laughs> mm, yeah, I see your point. Yeah, and I'm not going to admit that to myself either. So from now on, I choose to believe that Yahweh is going to just magic every problem away and that way i can go on believing it so what if it reads exactly like an ancient cultural fairy tale hey yeah i mean this is a story that deals with the creator of the universe since when did these kinds of stories have to make a fucking ounce of sense oh and just in the nick of time to yeah there's a, that line there i noticed back in the day when we we're you know looking at religions and like why is it that uh, you know, i still have this question like anything to do with the creation of the world it's never sensible. There's no sensible you know, hypothesis. You wouldn't call it a hypothesis, but like every every deity story is fucking nuts. 
I'm surely not the first person to notice this, and that's what that line was. You know, every this is a story that has to do with the creation of the universe. So why, you know, it's not as if it's going to make any, any fucking sense. They never do. Yeah. Anyway, and then the thunderclap and uh, just in the nick of time, you know, just in the nick of time, they've completely. Oh, they haven't lost their faith. They've, they've lost their. They've lost their rationality. You know, they, they've lost any semblance of like. Any, uh, oh, what's the word? What I try, what I try to represent here is that they've they've completely they they don't have any leg to stand on logically. They they've lost their own kind of self respect. They have to admit to themselves it's complete bullshit, and I'm going along with it anyway. Because to me, that's a fucking terrible way to have to live. Um, yes, I can see that what I believe is shit. But I don't have a choice, so I'm going to believe it. Like that's that that's terrible. <laughs> so hopefully I put people in that corner, and uh, you know you've got to come out of that. Okay, you've just you you can't stay there. You've lost your dignity. If that's what your religion brings you to, I don't believe it, but I really kind of ought to. So I just kind of will. Ah, uh, that's terrible. Anyway, how's it finish? Ooh, well, quick then, before I have a crisis of faith, start unloading all but two of the cats. You, take out all but two of the birds, two rodents, uh, two marsupials. You take out all but two of the dinosaurs. Well, we hadn't got around to loading them in yet, Dad. Remember, we didn't have any freaking room. Well, good, that saves us some time. Yeah, I never got to dinosaurs. That was an afterthought. I tried to put the dinosaurs in before, but um, you can't get consensus from believers on whether or not dinosaurs were there. You know, the young Earth creationists will say that they kind of were because they have to have been, um, but you'll get others saying not. So it became a it, it, to to have put that in with any more detail would have been to kind of pit one side of of, of believers against the other, and 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 I wanted to be more sort of thorough than that. So that's the only mention that dinosaurs ever got. Now we're only going to need one kind of dog, which means we can probably take out the wolves and hyenas and all that. Um, camels and donkeys are pretty much like horses, so take them out. No, no, actually take out the horses and leave the donkeys because they're smaller. They can have horses and donkeys instead. Um, get rid of all the beetles except food. Huh, yes, <laughs> all right, and that's that. All right, well, I hope that has been interesting to somebody. Um, I am proud of this one. I can remember that. Uh, uh, look, when, there was a video I made about the thing that made the things for which there is no known maker. This would have been 2008. Um, I had a cold and I recorded it anyway. Uh, the thing that made the things for which there is no known maker and who never began and will never end and who. Oh, I can't remember, but it's this really long name. You, you, you might remember it. Um, and I can remember when I recorded that and I uploaded it and I watched it again and I was, you know, I, I'd been used to kind of making bad, you know, reading badly. I'm not an actor by any stretch, so sort of reading badly and, and editing badly and having little pops and, and bad timings all the way through. And that one, that thing that made the things video, I watched it again and again looking for those sort of stuff ups and I couldn't find them and I was so proud. Um, and I kind of, I think I showed my his girlfriend at the time, now my wife. And I said, yeah, listen, there's no, I didn't fuck it up. And I was just, you know, that's the sort of standard for me. It's like, I didn't fuck it up. And then with the Noah one here, I mean, there are a couple of minor things in there that I've just pointed out along the way. But I the, the, I remember I uploaded this probably, probably in the morning, my time, and then probably went and got on with my day and then came back in the evening and, and and yeah, you know, just see comments and view counts and things just to see how it was going. And I watched it and I watched it again and I watched it again. I must have watched the whole thing like five or six times. Just like going, oh fuck, I've I've done it. Like this took so long to write. And I had such a clear kind of vision of what I wanted it to be, this frantic, chaotic, insane you know, chaos, and I got it, and it worked, and it flowed, and the bits flowed together, and they joined together well, and it was just such a joy. Um, I, I, I am, to this day, kind of proud of this one. And looking back on it now, all right, here's the takeaway. Ten years later, my God, I don't know how I did it. I don't know how I made that. Jesus, that's... Uh, 
that's better than I could do now by any stretch, I think. You know, I'm just so out of practice having had the kids and putting all the writing on hold. God, will I ever do anything quite as... Uh, <laughs> quite as... Uh, I don't want to say quite as good as this. That's very. I don't. I don't want to say that. But quite as. I, I, will I ever match the original vision that I had quite as well? You know, that's that's probably a, a better way to put it. Because I knew how I wanted it to turn out, and it kind of did. And uh, yeah, real joy. So anyway, thank you to the uh, several hundred thousand. Uh, well, I don't know how many people have viewed it, but it's got seven, several hundred thousand views, coming up towards a million now. Um, hey, if you've watched this all the way, I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad that uh, that it's of interest to so many people. That's uh, that's a that's a joy in and of itself to think that there are people still watching this. Perhaps I don't know. All right, I'll leave it at that.